They are telling, honey. And so you heard that she was still talking to the ex and they was gonna push you out the picture. I ain't have a family. And hand have a family. So all you got is a picture on a cell phone and you go, oh, this guy looks just like my niece. I don't think my brother's the father. What other doubt do you have? Did you witness? Did my, you my, hear about her family, sleeping my, with my other people? What I'm is the Tim. plan, though? I, mean, I realize now that there is a web of deceit, but I'm still not too clear on what is the plan. All right, folks, let's dive right into our first juicy case. We meet Mr. Jordan, who claims he was tricked into signing the birth certificate of a child that might not be his. Oh, the drama. He's here today to find out the truth and clear his name. Mr. Jordan, you claim the defendant tricked you into signing her daughter's birth certificate and being a daddy. But two years later, you were told that another man is her biological father. You opened your case because you want DNA proof you are not the father so you can get your name removed from the birth certificate. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Heim, you admit to being unfaithful to Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan is not holding back, y'all. He believes Ms. Heim was intentionally deceitful. He thought he was the father, but then he got hit with a bombshell. Apparently, another man had a paternity test done, and it turns out he might be the real daddy. Talk about a plot twist. That the other guy had done got a paternity test on Caitlyn, because she told me, oh, he already got one, and you know what I'm saying? I, that's why I know it's just you. Uh, she tricked me into thinking that that family was something sacred. You believe she was intentionally deceitful? Yes. And what was her motive? I, you know what? I have, I think it, her only motive was the, she, that she was able to get away with it. Honestly. Now let's hear Miss Heim's side of the story. She admits to being unfaithful, but insists that Mr. Jordan is the father. She even throws in some family drama, claiming her relatives are spreading lies. Oh, the tangled web we weave. And I only had sex with one man when we were together, and I had sex with him one time, and but we've been messing around for seven years, and I never became pregnant. I met Chris, and all of a sudden I came pregnant. So I know. I, Chris is the father. So wait, you're saying that you were only having sex with one other man other than Mr. Jordan? Just one time in April, and then I found out I was pregnant in June. Okay. Mr. Jordan is not buying it, folks. He's feeling hurt and betrayed. This man was there for the birth, cutting the umbilical cord and everything. He even washed off the nasty little afterbirth. Yikes, that's dedication right there. What are you feeling? Hurt, because my daughter, she's old enough to realize <laughs> she came and asked me. <laughs> Does my dad still love her? It hurt me so bad. She asked you, does my daddy still love me? Yes, he ought to. Now, now if I, if I will, um, she, I, it's, there's never been a moment where Caitlyn and I have been around each other and she feels like I love her less than or anything like that. Miss Heim is getting emotional, y'all. She's hurt by all the accusations and insists that Mr. Jordan is the father. But something tells me there's more to this story. Let's keep watching. And it was like, they, they started like throwing dirt on each other. You know what I mean? So she said something about this family members in front in front of this family member's boyfriend or whatever. So she, so the family member turned around and was like, well, why you ain't told Chris that he's not Caitlyn's dad? What? So I'm like, at, at that moment, it was just like, I was more in shock. Then, because at the end of the day, it's just like it's very funny, but you know, people can you can say whatever. Hold up, we have a surprise guest, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Santavius Knight enters the courtroom, claiming he might be the real father. This just got even messier. Buckle up, folks, we're in for a wild ride. That was the only one. Your Honor, I object. What was your point of having the baby have this relationship with Santavius that he's calling her his baby? That I mean, I didn't tell him that. I told him I was pregnant. Miss Hines, I'm his. gonna need you to tell me what the deal is. I need to know what's going on. She's old enough to know. Mr. Knight drops a bombshell, saying Miss Heim told him she was pregnant and that it was his baby. Oh, the plot thickens, but Miss Heim denies ever telling him that. Who's telling the truth here? This is getting intense. So are you saying he assumed he was the father? No, because he, me and him was like, like we could talk about anything. So when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, look, I'm pregnant. He said, oh, OK. So I feel like he assumed that it was his, but it's not his, it's Chris, baby. Your Honor, I object, I'm sorry. You know what, hold on, I'm about to object too, and I'm up here on this bench. <laughs> I am not getting any truth out of you, Miss Heim. Miss Heim is getting defensive, y'all. She's denying everything and claiming that Mr. Knight is lying, but the evidence doesn't lie, does it? We need some DNA results ASAP. I, get, oh, I had sex, and then I found out I was pregnant in June, so how is that possible? I just called him and let him know that I was pregnant. What did you say she said to you again? She told me to do with my baby. She said, I'm pregnant. I said, what you telling me for? She said, 
cousins, you know, telling me I love you when you get home. I let somebody else sign a birth certificate. I'm gonna fix them when you get home. Did it in third. I'm like, okay, say no more. You, she let somebody sign the birth certificate, but she's gonna fix it when you get home. Yeah. Judge Lake is not having any of this drama, folks. She's had enough of Miss Himes' web of lies. It's time to reveal the truth and put an end to this madness. The suspense is suffocating. That's irrelevant. You see what I'm saying? That's irrelevant to what, 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 what the matter at hand. You feel what I'm saying? And we got one person manipulating two different guys on one child. Like, it's not, it's not bothering. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna hurt you. You feel me? It's gonna hurt her. You dig what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, I don't want her life to be messed up off the, off the choices her mother made. You dig what I'm saying? Like, I love, I love that little girl. I, I, you know what I'm saying? If I could, you know what I'm saying? I would, but. Drum roll, please. The DNA results are in, and it's time to find out who the real father is. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Who will it be? The tension is unbearable. The biological father is Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan, you are Caitlyn's biological father. Mr. Knight, I know you really thought Caitlyn was your biological child. How are you feeling in this moment? At the end of the day, you know, in life, you can't, you know, you, when it come out, it come out, the truth come out, so, you know, I ain't really too mad about it, but, you know. Today, we're taking a look at the case of Vadaboncourt versus Furnari. Buckle up, folks, because this one's a doozy. Mr. Vadaboncourt is desperately trying to prove that he is not the father of Ms. Furnari's one-year-old son, Dawson. He's had enough of her lies and wants her out of his life for good. But hold on tight, because Ms. Furnari is confident that Mr. Vadaboncourt is the biological father, and she's not backing down without a fight. Petition the court to prove to Ms. Furnari that you are not the biological father of her one-year-old son, Dawson. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you can prove you're not father and when today's results win your case, you want her out of your life for good. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Fernari, though you admit to sleeping with two other men, you say there's no doubt that Mr. Vadbonker is your son's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Let's dive into their tumultuous relationship, or should I say lack thereof. Mr. Vadabonkor claims that there was never really a relationship between him and Ms. Fernari. They met on Facebook through his sister, talk about a modern love story, and had unprotected sex a couple of times. But then, Mr. Vadabonkor went away for months, only to find out later that Ms. Fernari was pregnant. Cue the drama. So, Mr. Vadabonkor, what were you told? I've had a couple people tell me, hey, you know Ms. Fernari's out here cheating on you. You. And I find out she's sleeping on a couch with another guy naked. She's in a shower, taking a shower with another guy this whole time. I'm away. The thing that gets me is the times don't add up from when I went away to when I came back for it to be my kid. So explain why the times don't add up. Because I was away for 10 months. But wait, there's more. Ms. Fernari admits to sleeping with two other men during the same period, but she is adamant that Mr. Vadaboncourt is the father of her child. Oh, the plot thickens. Will the truth finally come out? Let's find out. You're the sister that told him about the cheating? Yes. But you're standing with Ms. Fernari today? It's about this little boy right here. Tell that's, me what you that's know. That's one night after we had all been drinking, um, she slept with one of the people that came to our little get together. Is that the only time you caught her cheating? That's the only time I caught her cheating. I mean, I have susp I had suspicions, but. Why, because of her talking on the phone or? Um, just different behaviors and stuff. And I told my brother this stuff. And Now let's meet Mr. Vadaboncourt's sister, Janine, who has some juicy information to spill. She spills the tea, revealing that Ms. Fernari cheated on her brother not once, but multiple times. Oh, the audacity. Janine is standing with Ms. Fernari today, but it seems like she's more concerned about her nephew than anything else. Family drama at its finest. I put him out and then my brother came to live with me again, because no matter what, at the end of the day, he's my baby brother and I'll hold it down for him. Is this about the fact that he went back to Ms. Fernari after he came home, or is this about you truly thinking Dawson is your nephew. I truly believe that's my nephew. But your brother said he was also confronted by a guy. Right, I don't, I don't keep the same That's company That's it. Him. But hold on tight, folks, because we have another witness in the house. Charity Knox, Mr. Vadaboncourt's fiance, is here, and she's not holding back. She accuses Ms. Fernari of being all about Mr. Vadaboncourt and not caring about baby Dawson. Shots fired, it's a battle of the women, and things are getting heated. Two and a half, almost three. But she's held you down I the whole time. She's been she, down she for says you. she's held me down, but do you call holding down cheating on me? Mr. Vadbonker, I, I, I want to know, why do you think she so desperately is trying to say you are Dawson's father? I don't know, Your Honor. I have tried to get DNA tests with Miss Fernari. She I flakes out, out on for it. One. Let's take a moment to reflect on the roller coaster of emotions in this case. From Facebook flings to cheating allegations, this story has it all. It's like a soap opera come to life. But remember, behind all the drama, there's an innocent child caught in the middle. Let's hope the adults involved can put their differences aside and prioritize Dawson's well-being. Do you really want a relationship with him ultimately?
ultimately? No, it's about Dawson. I want him to be in Dawson's life. You want him to be a father? Yes, I want him to and be a father. And you will allow him? Yes, I will. To be involved? Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to be in And if dad. he's not his biological child, then what? Then I'll go my separate way. Now, Your Honor, there's been so many times I have tried to do so many things. I think she has some kind of all doubt right. in her mind that it's no. not mine. Finally, it's time to reveal the moment we've all been waiting for. The DNA results are about to be unveiled, and the tension in the courtroom is palpable. Will Mr. Vadaboncourt be proven as Dawson's biological father, or will Ms. Fernari's claims be shattered? Get ready, folks, because the truth is about to come crashing down. Mr. Vadbonker, you are the father. That's your son, David. Can I give my brother a hug? Through all this, I love Absolutely. my brother. Absolutely. You don't want to hug your sister? No, I don't. He doesn't want to hug Miss Vabon. At the end of the day, if he needs me, that's my baby brother, and I'm there. No matter what he may say, that's my brother. Ms. Lopez claims that Mr. Carbajal perpetrated a DNA testing scam to deny the paternity of her kids. She's tired of struggling alone and wants to prove he's the father once and for all. Oh, boy, this is going to be a wild ride. Ms. Lopez, you are here today because you claim the defense defendant, Mr. Carbajal, allegedly perpetuated a DNA testing scam to try to deny paternity of your kids. You say you are tired of struggling daily to take care of your children alone, and you need to prove he's their biological father today. Yes, Your Honor. But hold on to your seats, folks, because Mr. Carbajal is not going down without a fight. He argues that Ms. Lopez is the one who lied about him being the father, and he's here to prove it. Cue the dramatic music. Because I'm trying to figure out why was there ever doubt in the first place. Well, I'm I met her through a social network. She told me, hey, come to come see me, you know, for the weekend or just a, one night. So I went to go see her. And that day that I went to go see her, she'd be like, we basically had sex that first night. It was Boom. not that yes, first it night. No. Yes, it no, was it the first night. Yes, no. it was. Yes, it was. No, it was not. Yeah, whatever. Ms. Lopez. You meet and you start a relationship. Yes. Now let's get into the nitty gritty details. Ms. Lopez and Mr. Carbajal met through a social network and things escalated quickly. They had unprotected sex, gasp, and soon enough, Ms. Lopez found out she was pregnant. But here's the kicker. Mr. Carbajal wasn't exactly thrilled about the news. Ouch. So you claim Mr. Carbajal was the only person you were with. Yes, Your Honor. During that time, that she yes, was Your conceived. Honor. All she's doing this because she wants our money. She knows my I don't family. care she about wants, money, okay? She knows okay? my family has money, and she knows I don't work. I don't care I, about I don't money, work, Your right? Honor. I, I, growing up, I did not have a father, and I did not want my daughter growing up without a father. Ms. Lopez claims that Mr. Carbajal didn't want to have a baby with someone he didn't love. Talk about a heartbreaker. But Mr. Carbajal argues that there's more to the story. He believes Ms. Lopez was sleeping around, and he might not be the only contender for the title of baby daddy. Uh-oh. He did not have anything to say. We talked later, and he was still in shock, telling me that he didn't want to have a baby with someone he did not love. Hold on. So at that time, you told him you're pregnant. Yes. He didn't seem to be that enthused. No, what? he was not. Was there any other person? No, Your Honor. That you were having sex with at that time? No, Your Honor. I need to clarify. You're the mother of two children. Yes. Now, let's meet the adorable two-year-old Aliana, the center of this paternity storm. Mr. Carbajal even has her name tattooed on his arm. That's some serious dedication, folks. But does the resemblance between them go beyond skin deep? Let's find out. Well, it hurts me to know that she does not have him around. He, he says he's the father. He's even has her name tattooed on his arm. He was there a You week. have her name yes, tattooed do, on your, your arm? arm? Yes. Yes, I do. Even though you doubt it? Because I was, when she was first born, I was attached to her. I was really attached okay, to her. Okay, so you were attached to her. Yeah. So then why doubt? What like, made you doubt? She was the picture. No, there was another man. There yeah, was she not showed, another man. She showed my sister Miriam. Here comes the bombshell. Mr. Carbajal's sister, Christina, claims that Ms. Lopez showed her a picture of a guy who looked exactly like Aliana. Cue the gasps from the audience. Could this be the evidence they need to prove that Mr. Carbajal isn't the father? The plot thickens. All I right, so these are the doubts as it relates to Aliana. Let me understand the doubts as it relates to Noah. What doubts do you have? Well, when he was first born, like, she, she didn't let me sign his birth certificate. I didn't even sign his birth certificate. Why wouldn't she let me, so she's saying I'm the father, why couldn't I sign a birth certificate? Because you weren't she's there from the beginning. We were, I was there. I was there. there. I, I was there, there. there. I I was there when they were born. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. 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 H
on, Ms. Avila. But wait, there's more. Ms. Lopez sent Mr. Carbajal a picture of another man holding a baby, claiming it was his child. Talk about a double whammy. This case has more twists and turns than a roller coaster ride. Can anyone keep up? Your Honor, I was already no. pregnant with it's my big, son when my daughter man, was holding. She said she and got pregnant in November when I seen her in December. I was not pregnant in November, yes, okay? Yes, I did not cheat. She came to visit. She came to so visit. So you to my believe house. she was already pregnant? Yes. 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 No. Were you intimate with anyone else? No, Your Honor. I was not. Mr. Carbajal, do you believe you were the only man she was having sex with? I don't know that. See, I don't know if she was sleeping with me. I, I had sex the first night I, I seen her. Now let's talk about the DNA test. Brace yourselves, folks, because this is where things get really interesting. Ms. Lopez and her mom decided to take matters into their own hands and bought a DNA test from a store. No ID is required, just some swabbing and paperwork. Hmm, seems a bit fishy, doesn't it? So, Ms. Lopez, what do you have to say to that? Do she you would have to get pregnant in November? I did not have sex with anybody else. No, I did not have sex with anybody else. Ms. Lopez, you say Mr. Carbajal perpetrated a DNA testing scam. Yes, Your Honor. So that he could get out of taking care of the kid. He did a paternity test that he bought from the store. I did not know about it until he gave me the results that came back. But hold your judgment, because Mr. Carbajal's family was there as witnesses during the DNA test. They swear it was all legit. However, Ms. Lopez claims that her daughter's name was misspelled on the paperwork. Uh-oh, that's not a good sign. In the paperwork, do you have to include photo ID? No, nothing like that. No ID? No. So no ID to identify no. which All we gotta do kids. is swabbing or just put the name of the father and, and you, the kids. And you write that name yeah. in. The names are wrong on there. My daughter's name is spelled wrong. Uh, it was the kids. I do not know if it, it was, was the kids. kids. It, it was the kids. kids. I was my mom there. was there. She knows what she was doing. Was you think my mom was going to spend money there. on that? I wasn't there. No. Now let's get back to the court proceeding. The judge is not impressed with the home DNA test results. She's throwing them out faster than a hot potato. She can't accept them as evidence because they lack crucial information. It's time for a real official DNA test. Okay, now we have the answers for Aliana. We still have to get Noah's. My mom wouldn't have spent so much money mm -hmm. on those. Tests to we spend a lot of money. We spend a lot kids. of money to do those tests. You guys should have still told us what you were, what no, you were you gonna, we were gonna do. No, you think you guys were gonna let us do it? No. We would have let you no, do you it. Wouldn't. I would have let you do it. Yeah, no, you, you would never. You I wanted to be there, there when you guys did it. Gabriella told him. She if you want to do it, let's do it. The DNA results are in, and the judge is ready to reveal the results for Aliana and Noah. So, is Mr. Carbajal the father? Or has Ms. Lopez been weaving a lie so long? She's lost track of where it starts and ends. Let's find out. Mr. Carbajal, you are not Thank you. Noah's father. Thank you, Your Honor. What do you gotta say? What do you gotta say for yourself? Why you been lying to me that they're my kids when they're not? And you know my Who mom you been got really with? attached to them. You know how much that's gonna hurt my mom? Yes, I do. Your mom cried in front of me. Sorry, Your Honor, we have nothing to say. Okay, folks, let's dive right into this roller coaster ride of a case. Today, we have Mr. Broussard, a man desperately seeking the truth about his four-month-old son's paternity. He's convinced his wife, Mrs. Broussard, has been hiding some dirty little secrets. Oh boy, this is gonna be good. Mr. Broussard, you opened your case hoping the court will grant you a paternity test so you can prove you are not the father of four-month-old baby Charles. You say your one-year marriage to the defendant is on the verge of collapse because of paternity doubt and you need this test to save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Here comes Mr. Broussard, looking like a man on a mission. He's got that determined look in his eyes, ready to expose the lies and deceit that have been plaguing his marriage. Can you feel the tension in the air, folks? Why do you say your marriage is on the verge of collapse? I say my marriage is on the verge of collapse due to the infidelity, the trust issues, and all the evidence, coincidence that I discovered. And you need this test today because you, you're on the birth certificate. Yes, I am. You are this child's legal father. Yes. And here comes Mrs. Broussard, looking a little nervous, if you ask me. She's about to face the music for her alleged infidelity and the rumors that have been swirling around town. Will she be able to convince Mr. Broussard that he's the father? Let the drama unfold. He is so obsessed with my ex that he feels that I'm cheating on him every time I do something. Um, we argue, we fight all the time. Me and him just are not getting along at all. How long has it been this way? Um, since the end of last year. There has been rumors going around in the neighborhood that we grew up that he is not the father of our child. Mr. Broussard is spilling the tea, folks. He's sharing all the reasons why he's suspicious of his wife's fidelity. From mysterious cups on the table to disappearing energy drinks, this man has got a whole chart of evidence. I mean, who leaves random cups lying around? Suspicious? And I had poured those cups for a family member that had came over my house who was taking medication. 
Okay, so then when he says, how did the glasses or who are these two cops who was over here? Why not just answer, my family member, I gave them some water so they could take their medicine or I gave them something so they could take their medicine. Moving on. Because I just didn't want to start an argument about having someone in the house. Oh, Mrs. Broussard, you've got some explaining to do. She's denying all the allegations, claiming innocence in the face of her husband's mounting doubts. But can she convince the court that she's been faithful? We shall see, my friends. And how would they get information about your ex? No, I don't know nothing about no child. He never told me a child told him anything. But my ex was going around spreading rumors to make him upset. So did you ever confront this ex, Mr. Broussard? Oh, I did. He basically pointed the finger back at Helen. And when what did I he say? Her about it. She basically telling me that she's not entertaining him. She answers little questions. It's real minor. Hold on to your seats, folks, because things are about to get real messy. Mr. Broussard confronted Mrs. Broussard's ex-boyfriend, who dropped a bombshell accusation. He claimed that they were still communicating and planning to have a family together. Talk about a plot twist. So you see the picture, Mr. Broussard. Yes. And what do you say to your wife? In the back of my, the back of my mind, I was just like, everything's true. I'm at work, working hard, sweating. She out home creeping. I mean... You can step back over to the podium now, sir. That exhibit was very enlightening. So how do you go from rumors, the pictures, to just being convinced she slept with her ex? Mrs. Broussard is not taking these accusations lying down, folks. She's vehemently denying any involvement with her ex, saying it's all just a big misunderstanding. But can she convince the court that she's been faithful to her husband? So you admitted to your husband that you had slept with your ex in your house? Yeah. And you don't have no shame in it, huh? But I slept with him after his ex called me telling me that they were having an affair, too. Oh, so the revenge sex. Yes, I wanted him to feel just as hurt as I did. Oh, Lord. You say this happened in August. Yes. No, it happened in December. Oh, snap. Mr. Broussard just dropped a bombshell of his own. He found a picture on his wife's phone, and let's just say it was not suitable for family viewing. Who sends a naked picture to a married woman? This case just went from drama to full-on scandal. Temperature was 96, 79, 85. 91, as high as 97 degrees, which is hot. Very. And here is December. The actual temperature ranged between 30 degrees, pretty chilly, to 60 degrees. So, Mr. Broussard, you would not have been sweating if it was just 30 to 60 degrees. Mrs. Broussard, you've got some explaining to do. She admitted to having revenge sex with her ex after finding out about his affair. Revenge sex? Is that even a thing? But wait, there's more. She dropped the bomb that she was five and a half months pregnant when it happened. Cue the gasps. That the ex is truly the father of her child. Yes, I do. So, Ms. Broussard, have you told your ex about baby Charles? No. He doesn't contact you anymore? I don't call... I, he has no contact with me because I blocked him off of everything. So now you've blocked him? Yes. When your husband talks about his paternity doubt, about your beautiful new baby, the fact that he looks at the baby with doubt, what does that make you feel like? It hurts my feelings. The judge has heard enough and is ready to get to the bottom of this paternity drama. She's ordered both Mr. and Mrs. Broussard to take a DNA test to determine the true father of baby Charles. This is the moment of truth, folks. Will the results bring clarity or more chaos? It's the moment we've all been waiting for, folks. The judge is about to reveal the DNA test results that will either confirm or shatter Mr. Broussard's doubts. Will he be the father he's always believed he was, or will the truth be a devastating blow? Get ready for the big reveal. Mr. Broussard, you are the father. How does it feel to hear that? I feel a lot more better about the, um... The results, I still got love for him. As far as me and Helen go, you know, we have to work on our marriage and our differences. Pretty happy that um, this is my biological son. This is not your regular case. Mrs. Miller and her daughter, Shanna Garnett, brought Mr. Langston to court today. They are so keen to prove that he's the father of Miss Garnett after 36 years. Both sides stand firm on their case and demand an apology from the other party for being lied to. Regardless, the potential father and daughter have a warm relationship, with Miss Garnett calling him her best friend. Mr. Langston, however, ripped the bandage right off a few months ago and let her know that he is not her real father via text. Well, this started with a text. So after um, almost two years of reaching out to my father after uh, visiting him in 2015, I um, was pleading to get him to respond. He wasn't responding. And he finally responded with this message. 
So I think your mother blanked me and you about your birth father being me. She was missing around when you were born. They got distant for about two years, and Mr. Langston had something to say about that, stating the reason why they fell apart. So why were you estranged for two years? What happened? We live in different states, Your Honor, but we had always been close. I went to visit him in Chicago for a funeral. Um, it was by his side for one of our family members, and uh, everything was great. But when I returned back home, I don't know what happened. He just cut off communication. Well, I wasn't talking to her like I normally do. Why? This is where we see that father and daughter are so beautifully close. Though he did break the news to her so harshly, they really do love one another, it would seem. Miss Garnett, you grew up as a daddy's girl. You say he's your best friend. He's always been my dad. I've always known him to be my dad. When I became an adult, around 21 years old, that's when we started really becoming close. Um, two years ago, when I was at the uh, funeral with him, he had brought up for the very first time that he thought I may not have been his daughter, which blew my mind. And he went on and on about him and my mother's past. All of this conviction on the side of Mr. Langston raises the question, how is he so sure that Miss Garnet isn't his? What pushed him to paternity court and got him to hurt his little girl from all these years back? This is where he really spills the tea. My auntie downstairs let me in. I walked upstairs. I didn't knock on the door. I looked in, I see this guy sitting on the couch with her, like he running this game to get up on something. I knocked on the door. I said, what's going on? Ain't nothing, ain't nothing, nothing. This is my cousin. I said, hey, you can get out of here, cousin. You can leave. And, but, but, she, this, I don't believe it. So I, you believe that she was with someone else when she was with you? Seems like there's more going on than was let on. Suspicion is flying around about Mrs. Miller sleeping around, and this is what she has to say about it. So, Ms. Miller, who is this cousin? He was not my cousin. He was my, my sister's husband's cousin, and he, he was just a, a family friend as well. Was he someone you were intimate with? No, never. Was he at the house trying to talk to you, see if well, you have a relationship? Well, he liked me, but there was no way that I... Well, I wasn't inter interested in him, and I made that known to him all the time. Now, things are getting spicy. The spotlight is no longer on the father-daughter relationship and is now shining ever so brightly on the mother. However, Mrs. Miller is not having any of it. She stands her ground, and the courtroom is hot like an oven top. She immediately told me, because I pressure her, did you do anything with him? She kept saying no. Then she came around. Okay, I tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I gave him some because he kept knocking on the door bag. So I finally gave in and gave him some. Who are you getting me mixed up with? I'm serious. Man, don't, don't, who don't, are you don't, getting don't, me mixed don't, up don't, with? Don't, don't play that. I'm serious. You did that. You I told me that. I swear about. on my dad. Mr. Langston is not having any of it either. He backs his story up with more information and paints Mrs. Miller as a completely dishonest person. And I say, yeah, what are you trying to do? He was trying to get some. I say, yeah, did you give him some? No, I didn't give him none. I say, hey, you know how I am. If you did it, you did it. No, I didn't do it. I say, come on, you my way if you did it. Yeah, I gave him some. He, he knocking on the door, he kept on bagging and bagging. I finally gave him some. So Lord wait. is my witness. So, Ms. Miller, you don't remember this conversation. Fire on Mrs. Miller doesn't cease, as Mr. Langston claims that he can't remember even getting her pregnant in the first place. This gets a reaction from the court. Ms. Miller, when you got pregnant, mm -hmm. you knew he was the biological father? I knew he was about, oh, he was the only one I was sleeping with. He knew, didn't he? He the one told me he was, he, he told me upon conceiving that I was pregnant. Uh, really? I don't recall well, I that. Do. I do. I do. I just don't recall. I don't know how you can forget yeah. that. We talked uh, about it in 2001. Okay. <laughs> Of course, it's suspicious that he'd be holding all of this back for so long. If he really thought she wasn't his, why wait 36 years to talk about it? I paid child support not only 18 years. I paid it 20 years. But they started start? sending me checks back for overpayment. 1,700, 800, 1,000, 500. So send how come overpaid. you didn't take send, that send, send, 100, oh, $1,500,000 send, send $1, and, to and me. pay for a DNA test went out before I turned 36 years I'll old? I'll tell you, I hey. Miss Garrett has an emotional outburst about how hurt she was by her supposed father breaking the news to her and about how they have so much in common. A grand plot twist was revealed after Miss Garnet posted on Facebook. She put up a picture of herself and Mr. Langston's father, her supposed grandfather, side by side, and the semblance is quite uncanny. Additionally, we get to see the depth of Mr. Langston's trust issues and a whole lot of background to this story. If he spilled the tea before, he definitely dropped the kettle now. Do you see the resemblance to your father? Be honestly, I, I do. 
But it's a thing right here. I, he, my father put me out. She was helping me take care of my mama. She's a good person. I ain't gonna take that from her. My father put me out because she said, I don't like how you, you treating her. So she was there in the house with my father. So. What are you trying to say? Yeah. What are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say, I don't know. So what? Mr. Langston and Miss Garrett are supposedly half siblings now? After a lot of ruckus, the results are revealed, and oh boy, is it a huge shock. Mr. Langston, you are not the father. <gasps> are not the father? He is not her biological what? father. Now don't look at me. Ask her who your daddy really is. I'm gonna love you. Don't do that. You my baby. Next up is a court case for the books. Miss Capples, the plaintiff, stands before the court with her 15-year-old son, Jason. Miss Capples calls out Mr. Harris to be the father of her son. This case is so chaotic. Even the court had a good laugh from their introduction. Mr. Harris started talking. We used to go to high school together. Uh, I didn't go to high school with her. And we were Facebook friends. That's Mr. Harris, um, I made him my man crush Monday. Okay. He's a good, he's a good guy. Hardworking, good father. Uh, we messaged back and forth on Facebook for a while. After that, we exchanged okay. numbers. And after that, we started hanging out, getting up, and it just kind of went from there. She came with her son's birth certificate and was so intent on getting it signed by Mr. Harris in front of his girlfriend, Miss Mayfield. In the middle of all this, it seems like Miss Capples is more interested in rubbing their old fling in the face of Mr. Harris's girlfriend. Miss Mayfield had her thoughts on the blast from the past. Are you now with Miss Mayfield in a relationship? Yes, That's when I had got with her in a relationship. She was around five months. But she got jealous of what, man? What is there to be jealous about? I don't care about you guys Girl, being together. Miss Mayfield, Miss yes. Mayfield. Yes. So go Sit ahead. Down. Well, basically when we started dating, he told me about the situation and was like, you know, I was talking to some girl. I may have a possible baby with her, you know, whatever, whatever. So I, as a woman, I just ended up accepting that. Miss Capples definitely came prepared for a proper throwdown. She presented the court with Jason's window of conception straight from the doctor's office. As expected, it proved she was together with Mr. Harris for nine months up till a few weeks after Jason was conceived. However, when asked a question, unfortunately for Mr. Harris, he cast a net for himself. All right, Mr. Harris, do you agree you were intimate with Miss Capels in the month of April? I'm not sure, you know. I'm not sure. You don't know. You don't remember the actual month. Well, yeah. So it could be true or it or not. It could be true. So it could be. All right. Funny guy. All right. Thank you so much for that presentation. So, Mr. Harris, if you don't remember Oh, what a shocker. That's not the end of it. It gets wilder. Mr. Harris went deeper into the little mess. When he was he don't even know your real you name. You were. So how was that? You, you laid Everybody up Everybody thinks my name is name. Muffin. What yeah, are you I talking about? Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Who, wait, wait, wait. Who didn't know whose real name? I didn't know her real name. Mr. Harris, you were sleeping with this woman for all these months and you didn't even know her name? Not her real name. Well, I saw something about this in my court papers and I really couldn't believe it. Jerome. You can bet that the judge had something to say about this web of irresponsible behavior. Well, we contacted Mr. Harris and told him that Mr. Tara Caples summonsed him for a DNA test. He said, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. I said, Muffin? <laughs> mm. That is correct. I'm pretty sure I told him my name. Would you remember Shantira or would you remember Muffin? Would I go by around I'm town? Good. If you having sex for that many months with the same person without mean? using any protection, <laughs> You gotta at least know their name. Mr. Harris was persistent. He stood his ground, saying that everyone around him on social media kept telling him that Jay Sion isn't his son. Imagine being in this man's shoes. In a situation of being the last to find out, just that, this time, it's about your own supposed baby. As it turns out, he's been doubting the whole thing since day one. Did he get to come to the delivery room? He, he didn't have a ride, Your Honor. Well, I was at work. He, he didn't have a ride? Have a ride. No, to the I was at the work when she delivered the baby. The next morning, I came, I came up there. <laughs> and you did. When I looked at him, he, he didn't look like me at all. No, he doesn't. And not. I, I had my doubts. I've had been here, my doubts. But like I say, everybody around town says that she goes around saying it's another guy's baby. Would you look at that? Miss Capples is having none of it, though. The argument ensues. If I'm telling you that what, I'm I mean, in labor, well, she called my two hours she before did call time, my cell phone. And my friend and had my cell phone, and she was. 
texting him statement. the whole time like, um, she's in labor. So by the time he never showed, you were angry, and so then you didn't I wouldn't say... care. I wasn't worried about that. A birth, him signing the birth certificate at that point. You want to act like you ain't the daddy? We can But you like are that. here today saying now he has to sign it in front of his girlfriend. Oh, boy, what a case. In addition to all of this, Miss Mayfield and Miss Capels keep bickering and throwing side comments in court. I did go and through your phone. Off. And yes, you I did. Salty. Cut me so, off. Yeah, oh, that's please. the time y'all stopped talking. Girl, I please. know, boo, I know the whole story. I'm sure you do, because you were there, right? I was already pregnant, and I didn't even know I was pregnant. That's nasty. Hold on now. Let's I that's don't the go only out. reason. Because you, you could about? easily give him to him when he did. He don't he have to be out some too. You he don't have to have the kids. What right. you talking no, about? No, he don't. He don't. He don't. He don't. All right, one at a time. One at a time, ladies. After raining fire on Miss Capples, Miss Mayfield got her own share of the cake from the judge. There's no nothing. So it's easy to blame Miss Capels, but you also have to look at your man. Mm -hmm. Because he was in my man right. at the time. Right. It doesn't matter. It's your man now. I was there. I was, I was actually you. there I in the beginning. He is a dad. Like buying pampers and clothes and stuff. But like I said, Miss Cables had a problem. She disappeared for months. No calls, no texts. Okay, so this is yeah. another interesting fact. With the new turn of events, it would seem like Miss Capples was holding out on us. She went on to the meat of the story. She was strongly convinced that Miss Mayfield was stalking her. What a plot twist. Here is what she had to say. I'm going surgery, getting ready to have my tube side. That is my job. That is my job. Work that is my job. You say, what's your, your honor, as a woman, I would not want to be in a room with a woman that's having my boyfriend's baby. Okay, so you that's, were the patient. You, know, you that, have that's that. a little too much. But wait a minute, Miss Capel. She does. You work at the hospital, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. And then that was where they told you your station or where you were supposed to be. Yeah. You were assigned we have our to that. Today we got our stuff to do. Yes, ma'am. Now what? She is a staff at the hospital. Was she attending to Miss Capel's on purpose? Oh boy, such questions to have. Regardless of all of this, the results are in, and you wouldn't believe what they are. With all the drama, what happens after the results are in is the most shocking thing ever. Who would have thought? The last thing to expect from this case is an apology from any party, really. Mr. Harris, you are not the father. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't sleep with no one else. Miss Cable. Well, I would like to publicly apologize to Mr. Harris. I honestly thought that it was yours. I... We messed around. We were intimate a lot. And you know we were. It was a very big possibility that it was yours. If you think you've seen drama in court, I can assure you that you have not seen anything yet. Usually, it takes two parents to biologically make a baby, right? Well, there are at least three parents on the table here. Mrs. Shaw, her daughter Kiona, and LeBron Matthews are in court for completely different things. Mrs. Shaw is here because she hopes Matthews is not Kiona's father. Kiona is here because she hopes Matthews is her father. Matthew is here because, oh well, he just got a new suit. After the way that, it, that things went, when it went I camp. see why you wore your little suit too now, Mr. Matthews. <laughs> You see? Mm -hmm. I said, you, I said he's real ready for court, ain't he? Yeah. Uh-huh. Go ahead. What are you about to no, say, Miss Shaw? Oh, God. It, it's the, the one that's been consistent. In these court cases, we hear situations about baby mamas, exes being in court together, but this time it's way different. The relationship between these two people that brought about Kiona is wilder than anything you've thought about. Trust me. Look at him. I turned around and I looked at his wife. Mm. And... Did somebody say wife? Yeah, they both were married. Oh, so you... Oh, and you yes. had a husband. Yes. Yes. Oh, so you came to court with your wife. Correct. No wonder you said you never had sex with this woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you had a husband. Yes. All right, so you two were basically cheating on your spouses with one another. What a wild turn of events. It absolutely sounds like a plot from a TV show. Like that was not enough. Matthews explains the entire relationship further. Having fun, we both of us young, you know, and when she told me she was pregnant, I was too busy trying to enjoy myself because I wasn't trying to be with no one woman. I already had a wife. So the point is when you stood in the courtroom with your wife and you said you never slept with Miss Shaw and you knew you weren't telling the truth, was that because you were scared to lose your wife or is that yes. because you did not want to be bothered with a child? A little bit of both. With so many men in her life growing up, Kiona felt like she never had a father. Regardless, this one thing constantly made her sad and needy of fatherly love growing up. She described it perfectly here. I remember it being really uncomfortable, honestly. I felt like I was the stepchild. Like, you know, his the way that he was with his other kids, he wasn't like that with me. So I wanted to him to feel the way he felt about his other kids about me. I did, but I wasn't wasn't really there either. You know, I was if I wasn't at work, I was ripping and running. So, Miss Shaw, I want to know from that point, you decided 
I'm not even going to be bothered with- Speaking of the men in Kayona's life growing up, her mother, Mrs. Shaw, did not hold back. She kept them coming. Or did you say that because you knew you had a paternity doubt, but you just weren't going to be bothered with him because he lied? Um, he was not the only man that I had slept with. Mm. Other men Were you honest about husband. that to Miss Thompson, your daughter? Yes. Uh, she's known all her life. So why did you open the case against Mr. Matthews if you always knew that there was another possibility? Because when my daughter would go to his house... It seems like these two go way back in time. Matthews goes on about everything that happened during their relationship and how he reacted to her being pregnant for him. It's a no-brainer they even have a baby in the first place, really. Because when she first told me that I was the dad, I didn't want to believe it because I was doing my own things. But every time I turned around, I was bringing you fish sandwiches when you was pregnant. Every time yes. you turn around, you just like, babe, I'm, I'm hungry. And at the time, you had a but, husband, and well, here he it is. Wait a minute. Home. Okay, but you had threw him out. Yeah. But then when I came over there, you, know, you, you had me rubbing but, your stomach and all that good stuff. I it, had you rubbing my and stomach. Here, yes, that. you did. Yes, you did. Stop that and here it is. Tell me, bring me a fish sandwich <laughs> over to the house. If you think that's interesting, you will not see this coming. How exactly did a married man and a married woman have a baby for one another from an external party? Oh, boy. Oh, you yes. remember that. Did but wait, that. I want to understand this. Yeah. So you're pregnant, but your husband's somewhere else. Right. right. Because and see, your, that's how that came your about. Your lover's coming over to feed you some fish sandwiches. Mm hmm Because my husband was still in and out at the same time time when I got pregnant, mm -hmm. but that six months, I had threw him out of the house. So he had him another girl. I went and got me four other guys. Oh! And was doing my thing. And that's what I did. It was a choice, but I was young and... Oh, boy! What a turn of events. She was not just cheating on her husband with one man, but five different men. After Kiona was born, it appears that Matthews lost his sweet spirit. Several scenarios point to him not doing up to the bare minimum. In as much as the paternity of the little girl was uncertain, there was so much more to have done better. The last time you saw Mr. Matthews? Um, I was a junior in high school. So it's been about mm. 14 years. Oh, my goodness. Mm. So, Mr. Matthews, your testimony is true. You've been a pretty bad dad. Yeah, I was a terrible father. And that's why you're here, to right your wrongs. Right. That's correct. I enjoyed my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Amen. You're right. I yeah. mean, let's be honest. Yes. It's in the context of what your enjoyment was. Right. There's just too much drama unraveled in court with this case. However, taking the spotlight away from Matthews and to Mrs. Shaw's now late husband, Mr. Brooks, he announced that Kiona wasn't his, with just one gaze at her when she was born. My grandmother, you know, went over there and seen the baby because where Miss Shaw was living at the time, you know, rumors fly around. First my grandmother told my mother, then my mother told me, and I was like, nah, you know, I'm not gonna sit back there and say yes. What did they say? She said, well, the baby look like you. I said, no, I said, no, it don't. I'm not gonna sit back because I didn't want my wife to know. Well, my mother told my wife. Oh! What a circus that really must have been. The DNA tests finally came in. Mrs. Shaw seems really averse to the thought of Matthews being the father of her daughter and does not mind showing it. Matthews simply wants to redeem himself as a good father after all these years and seems interested in being a part of Kiona's life. What a shock the results caused. Mr. Brooks is not her father. What are you feeling in this moment, Miss Shaw? And I know Mr. Brooks would. Mr. Matthews, you are not the father. I'm wow. so sorry, Keanu. I love her. As the last on the list, we have one of the most emotionally chaotic cases. The father, or the potential father, is rather not happy to be here. Right from the case introduction, McGreer is shaky and almost in tears. Though Amia is supposedly born from a summer affair from 20 years back, he loves her so much and is here to prove that he is indeed her biological father. Amia, on the other hand, is having none of this. You know, I'm doing this because I love her. <laughs> and I really want her to know, <laughs> you know, I, I, I really apologize for the times that I wasn't there and couldn't be the dad that I really wanted to be. I don't believe that you're my father. I don't want you to be my father. You don't want him to be your father? No. He just was never there as a father. He popped in and out of my life, like, over the years. Were you she... in and out of her life, son? Yes. Amia has her own share of expressed feelings as she emotionally told the court what life was like without her father completely present in her life. And oh my, what a description. Tell the court what it was like growing up without the man you were told was your biological father? Well, you know, there would be times where um, I would ask for him and he was nowhere to be found. There were times at school where they had father-daughter dances. He was nowhere. Everybody else had their father. Why can't I have mine? Even at 20 years old, those are still memories you carry. McGreer tried to get words in. He tried to plead his case, but Amia was too broken to listen. It's really interesting that hurt people have all the power to hurt people this way. Let's look at them days when I wasn't there. I'm in one state, 
you in another state. It doesn't matter. And if you really thought that you was my father, you would have made a way to be there. No matter what you went through, you was never there. Wow. And then you want to come in and out of my life five years at a time. You want to come in my life when I'm 19 and try to be a dad. It's not going to work like that. Essentially, Amia explained with so much pain that he skipped six to seven years of her life at intervals, and that does not give him the right to suddenly want to show up right now. Still should Man, have been there. It doesn't I understand. matter. I understand how you feel. No, you don't. Oh, I understand how you feel. No, you don't. Because, because if you did, you would have made an effort to be there no matter what. But I did make efforts to be there with but you. But you bounced in could. and out of my life. But when I could, I did. It does not and matter. You should have been and the at father. The end of the day, you should have been I a am father. Still your dad. McGreer, still lost for words, kept saying repeatedly that his lifestyle did not permit him to be the father he was meant to be. Away from the father and daughter for a minute, we get to understand the relationship between the mother, Ms. Wade, and the potential father. They had a summer affair, broke up, and she started dating another man about two weeks later. Fast forward to the father and daughter's first meeting, Amia was already two and a half months old. She continues with this tasty ultimatum. Did you tell Mr. McGreer you were pregnant when you found out? He wasn't there during the pregnancy. By the time he got back in touch with me and came back down to Greenwood, I had already had Amia. Amia was about two and a half months old the first time he actually seen her. We tried to work it out then, but things just didn't work out, and I actually gave him an ultimatum. I actually told him, it's either me and your daughter, or it's your lifestyle. If you thought Amia was done talking about her hurt, oh boy, are you wrong. She recalled memories from her childhood that hurt her the most. He made so many promises that he didn't keep. When I was 13, promised to get me a whole new wardrobe of clothes for school. I had to go to school with the same clothes over last year, and that resulted into me being bullied all high school. So as a result, I think that was his fault. <laughs> There were times where little things, like the bookmobile, came around. I wanted a book called My Dad for $10, didn't get it. Oh boy, isn't that the wildest thing? As it would turn out, there are other kids. Wait for it. Do you hear her when she's speaking, Mr. McGriff? Yes. Actually, Mia actually got more time than any of my other kids, except for the newborns that I have. But Ms. I Wade, I think she feels a level of envy. And because I, you are so focused on raising those children and she felt like, well, if you could get focused on raising these children, why couldn't you get focused on raising me? Newborns. It keeps getting wilder. Amia goes on to narrate how there was another father figure in her life since she was about 11 years old and it seems like he was everything she ever dreamed of. He would just come around and speak to me, you know, give me a little change, like carry pocket full of change. He said that he could be my father and that's when he automatically introduced me to like six of his other kids. And after that, I spent more time with them. He's been taking care of me ever since that age. He has been there for my prom days. He spent time with me and his other children. He's, he took us to the zoo. He, like, spent quality time. After Miss Wade was asking about this perfect father, she revealed that it was the person that she got into a relationship with after her little summer fling 20 years ago. What an interesting turn of events. As everything was getting wrapped up, McGreer spoke to his potential daughter about their reality. And if you allow me, there'll be no more broken promises. There'll be no more broken promises. I don't like to make promises that I can't keep. That hurts me even more not to be able to come through when I say that. You know, that takes, that takes a lot, you know. I let my own down. And I let myself down even more because where I'm at today is for me. It's funny. What a beautiful outburst of emotion. Such raw genuinity that can't possibly be faked. To wrap all this up, the results are finally in. You did not see these reactions coming. Are not the father. <sighs> I'm so sorry. But like I said, the broken promises won't be broken. And this doesn't change what I feel for you. <laughs> Even though you're not my father, I will allow you to be that. She let him be her father, huh? Isn't that something? Judge Lake had the perfect words to conclude the case. I know that was not what you expected to hear. Even though you came here saying you had the information that suggested someone else was your biological father. But Mr. McGreer, I want you to keep loving that, that arm you got around her, <laughs> just like that. 
I can see how much you've grown. All she wanted to do was find out the identity of her father. You could almost say for her, it felt like a dying wish. Ms. Dixon had been through so much in her life, and now she has to battle with cancer for the rest of her life. She was in court because she believed that Mr. Frio was her real father, and she was going to stop at nothing to prove it in that courtroom. Even though he signed her birth certificate, he has been denying her since she was a little girl. In Mr. Frio's defense, he said another man confronted him and told him that Ms. Dixon was not his daughter. Trust me, this is one case you'll never forget. Day you come to our court after a very difficult journey and yes. some grave health issues in your state. Yeah. Uh, you say you believe that Mr. Froyo is your father yes, and he has denied you since you were a little girl even though he signed your birth certificate. Yes, ma'am. You are seeking results of a paternity test to prove that he is indeed your biological yes, sure father. Are. Now, Mr. Froyo, you claim you have serious doubts. Oh, trust me. All she felt was anger, hurt, and resentment towards the man she claimed was her father. I mean, she's literally fighting for her life every day and now the man she has known all her life to be her father is denying her? I'm pretty sure you would feel the same way if you happened to be in her shoes. She didn't even want anything from him. All she wanted was for him to stop denying her and be by her side till her very last days. I wonder why he's being so mean and refusing to accept that she's his daughter. Where did it all go wrong? Um, I was diagnosed with cancer and recently I've been very ill. I would like my father to be there. I want to know. I'm 25. I've gone this far. I don't want anything from him. I just want to know. I don't want him to feel sorry for me. He says he's not my dad, but he'll be there for me. I don't need a charity case. You know, if he's not my dad, he's not my dad. But if he is, I'd like him to know, like, I've been through so much. Um, my grandmother passed away, his mother, in 98. Talk about a man being mean to his child. Mr. Frio fit the description perfectly. Trust me, you don't him being your dad, because if that was the case, you might end up running away from home. He literally told Ms. Dixon at her grandmother's funeral that her tears were being wasted because she wasn't her grandmother. Oh, trust me, you heard that right? This is what I'd like to refer to as all shades of mean, because that's just what it is. The craziest part was Ms. Dixon's mom claimed he denied her because he wanted a boy as a child. Wow. Quote, unquote, over the phone, you're not seeing it. Oh, no, 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 that is not true. He would not give me a phone number, an address. He wouldn't tell me where he was taking her, how long he was taking her, and I wasn't having that. And there is no Tom Ashley. Are you serious? So you're saying, Miss Walby, you're saying there's absolutely no Tom so you don't even yeah. Here's where the stories were beginning to not add up. Mr. Frio was denying Ms. Dixon to be his daughter. But guess what? He had her name tattooed on his body. Now, if she wasn't your daughter and you claim she belonged to someone else, why would you go on to have her name tattooed on your body? In his defense, he claimed he once believed she was his daughter until just five years ago. He sure knows how to give an excuse for everything. As if that wasn't bad enough, he was so rude to Ms. Dixon's mother in the courtroom. Even Judge Lauren had to call him to order. Are you serious right you now? You denied me in 98. Let me ask you. Hush up there, lady. I'm talking. Oh, Mr. Dixon. Oh, back up. Simple Barbie. reason is, Your Honor, mm -hmm. why does Samantha have Dixon for her last name if I am true, because her biological he, father, and it's not my last asked, name? He asked me at the hospital, do not put Florio on there because it would upset his mother. Don't play that. That's why Dixon. I gave her Dixon. Dixon. After a ton of arguments in the courtroom, it was confession time, and Mr. Frio had to tell the court why he had so much doubt that Ms. Dixon could not be his daughter. Now he claimed five years ago he was on an outing with his son in Florida when a man approached him and said, Ms. Dixon wasn't his daughter. Wait, what? A random guy just walks up to you and says, your daughter isn't your daughter? Something definitely doesn't sound right with that story, wouldn't you say? Samantha has never been your daughter. I go, <gasps> what do you mean? My son sat next to me. He says she's mine, and I'll never go to New York State to prove any different. Well, I'd like to know who he is really because he might be a better this is dad than you do you see this you were sitting there yes ma'am and this gentleman just throws this out to you at the same time he was seeing the girl he's married to now yes and seeing patty so you guys were together yes ma'am. living together yes ma'am the big question now was did mr frio have any form of affection for miss dixon at all because he sure wasn't showing that he did in that courtroom there were no signs or traces that he ever loved her at all what else could be hurtful than being in a position where your dad doesn't even show that he cares for you knowing that you're battling with a very serious condition trust me anyone who could feel for miss dixon was sad he denied her on so many occasions from the moment she was a child till she grew into an adult. I have neither dislike her or like her. There were several instances that Ms. Dixon enumerated, ages five, eight, that 
she says you denied her. What I, are these circumstances? When I was about 13, no, it was when my grandmother died, so we're, we'll say from 10 to 13, he was dating a girl who didn't like me. She considered to me considered me to be a ghetto hood rat because I didn't have the best of the best. So I called his phone. Oh, it was high time Mr. Frio got some scolding from the judge. It was starting to get very upsetting and irritating to listen to the way he spoke about Ms. Dixon and her mother in that courtroom. He went as far as saying that the case was starting to look like a sympathy situation and not a paternity court case. Now, would you imagine that? How heartless can you be to say something like that in a courtroom? I honestly want to know if he is the real father because he is crossing the line on so many levels. It sounds like it's a sympathy thing instead of a paternity thing, you're right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Froyo, wait a minute. How could you listen to I'm this listening. woman? I'm listening. Explain what she has gone through, what she is going through, and say, Your Honor, it sounds more like it's a sympathy thing yes, Your than Honor, a paternity it is. thing. That's what it sounds like. Well, I submit to you today that it is both. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Morris and Ms. Thorpe. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Get ready, paternity folks! Mr. Froyo, you are her father. Told you! I'm a man you of my word. Samantha, I apologize to you, and I'm wrong for being the way I was, but you know what? Now you know the truth, and I apologize. Can I have a hug? I'm sorry, baby. I'll be there for you. Entangled in the romance of being with an older man, Ms. Moyet wasn't only left with having to take care of her little baby girl, but was also left with a more than shattered heart. This wasn't just any type of heartbreak break, trust me. Her left was left bleeding, and she felt disappointed in herself for falling in love with someone like Mr. Lester. Will she get over the heartbreak? Let's find out. You're here in court today to prove that Mr. Lester, a man who is 20 years older than you, is the father of your three-month-old daughter, Nyla Moyet. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You claim Mr. Lester has done nothing for your daughter, therefore you're suing for half of child rearing expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Lester, you say that you and Ms. Moyed were never in a relationship and that she had multiple sex partners. Mr. Lester wasn't going to give in to any thought that he could be the father of Ms. Moyet's child. For some reason, Ms. Moyet thought she was with a man who loved and cared for her, but got Mr. Lester. It was all fun and games till the bills came due. Mr. Lester has hardly been involved in Nyla's life. Um, besides the fact of three cases of diapers, a onesie that he bought for her, which was a boy outfit. Other than that, me and my mother have been providing for her food, milk, and everything and things like that. I also have evidence here showing you that um, I have been bu um, buying, providing clothes, um, food, cribs, Let me see that evidence. Things were never all lovey-dovey between Mr. Lester and Ms. Moyet. When she found out she was pregnant, she told Mr. Lester. But was he excited about the baby? Hell no! It was like the baby was gonna spoil all the fun he was having. He was not happy. Now, I actually planned this pregnancy. I went over to his house the day I was ovulating, okay? And I let him know, babe, I'm ovulating. I wanna have a baby. We did that nothing. That is not true. Yeah, we did not. nothing to prevent Nyla. And to make matters even worse, since I've had Nyla, we still haven't done anything to prevent another one. He's actually Ron, even is... told me. I went to my Ron, sick we week. don't even have sex. Yeah, I'm... Mr. Lester wasn't going to allow her to state the obvious, so he jumped in and called her a big fat lair, stating that all she said was all in her head and they hadn't been intimate in a really long while. Well, he sure saw that coming. He denied it all. But the revelations from Ms. Moyet will leave you in so much shock. We not have a sexual relationship now. We haven't since, since she told me she was pregnant. Yana, that's a lie. And now, it's not. Yana, we've had sex since I've had my daughter five times. I've counted. That's not true. Well, she's only three months old. Exactly. So, you're, Mr. You're Lester, wanted... you're saying that this is all in her mind? Yes, Your Honor. It is definitely in her mind. We've had sex, and I don't know why you're lying. Like, we did, we just had sex yesterday. Mr. Lester isn't being nice to Ms. Moy at all in the courtroom. He kept emphasizing the fact that he didn't want a relationship with Ms. Moy He said he just wanted to have a good time, but Ms. Moy was insistent on having a baby for him. Now, who's telling the truth? I'm pretty confused at this point. Are you deciding in your own mind I'm going to have a baby, or are you consulting with him and he's agreeing? No, I consulted, he didn't agree. Oh, oh, wait. So you said, I want to have a baby, and he said, I don't want to have a baby, and then you went on ahead and had a baby. Correct. Well, she told the truth. 
Yes, she did. Mr. Lester, yes, Your Honor. you weren't interested in having a child. No, I wasn't, Your Honor. I only was interested in the friendship. It was war in that courtroom. The things that were coming out of both Mr. Lester and Ms. Moyet's mouths were just very unbelievable. Even Judge Lauren was very confused as she couldn't add up what they were saying. That is so not true. I, we, we were not together every day. I wasn't mentally ready for a committed relationship, but I did But Mr. Lester, whether you were ready or not has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not you are Nyla's biological father. You understand that? I, I totally agree. Because, look, you're 45 years old. Mr. Lester, who never wanted to have a kid with Ms. Moyet, stated that he had doubts that the baby was his. Was he being delusional? I mean, he was basically sleeping with Ms. Moyet without using protection. Trust me, people, these two are nuts. At this point, all Judge Lauren wants to figure out is who is telling the damn truth. When I first met Ms. Moyet, she told me her her name was Mia. Okay. Come to find out her name was Iris. I left her name in, in my conscience as Mia because she was always missing in action. That's what M-I-A stand for. Two, she told me out of her own mouth she had a boyfriend. Okay. One, she didn't appreciate that I wasn't spending time with her. I don't show her any affection and that she has a boyfriend that's better than me. The moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty as to whether their relationship was going to be saved or shattered for good. Time to see what the future holds for them. I hope you guys are ready. Mr. Lester, you are Nyla's father. Yes! Did I tell you? You need to be respectful. Did I tell you? I understand you're upset. <laughs> Use proper language. Oh, well, and that baby was... Take a deep breath, Miss Moya. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's so sad because that, like, I gotta protect her. This revelation was one that Ms. Jones wasn't expecting to uncover in that courtroom. While she was growing up, she felt mistreated and unwanted by Mr. Jones and his family, only to discover that there is a possibility that she could have another man as a father. Could you imagine that? The revelation shook the walls of Ms. Jones's heart and left her with so much confusion. Mr. Jones, on the other hand, believes that there is no chance on earth that he could be her biological father. He wasn't just certain. He claimed he could prove it. Jones, you say that growing up, you felt unwanted by the defendant, Jerome Jones, and his family. Yes, Your Honor. Then four months ago, you learned that he and another man could possibly be your father. Yes, Your Honor. And you say this revelation has left you devastated and confused. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Jones, you argue that you're 100% positive that you're not her biological father. Yes, Your Honor. The words she used to describe her life while growing up were unwanted, neglected, and invisible. Mr. Jones, who was meant to be her father figure, was almost never present in her life. She couldn't even remember spending any quality time with Mr. Jones, which then begs the question, was he really her father? I mean, dads are meant to love their kids, but Mr. Jones wasn't doing a great job at that. All right, so, Ms. Jones, I need to start at the beginning. So what was it like growing up around Mr. Jones and his family? Your Honor, I felt unwanted and lonely and um, invisible. Wow, take me there. What was it like for you as a little girl? He was in and out my life, barely saw him. But you knew him to be your father? Yes. But you barely saw him? Yes. Was in and out your life? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Jones was so certain that she was not his child. He claimed to be present in Ms. Jones's life, but was quite certain he wasn't her biological father. On several occasions, he had fights with her mother about the paternity of Ms. Jones, but her mother was very insistent on the fact that she knew he was the father. He even said her mom was the one who didn't want to get the DNA test done to determine who their real father was. Have a test done when she was little. Yeah, but my mom told me that you said you didn't have the money for it. No, that's not true. I went to, at first I didn't, but I went to the hospital and I got there and Terry knows that Ms. Brittingham knew that when we got to the hospital, I was there to get this test done then. And I, what I was happened? Up, I was standing up in the line to wait to be waited on. I got there, this gentleman was ahead of me, and when he moved, I stepped up and I turned around and looked. I looked up. Terry was walking out the door with the baby on. This is ridiculous. The conversation about the use of protection while in a sexual relationship comes up and Mr. Jones and Ms. Jones's mother get into a brawl. They start arguing and yelling at each other, saying, you used protection. No, you didn't use protection. No, you have never used protection. There was no going forward with these two because they just couldn't agree on anything. My mom told me you didn't use protection oh, at that's, all. That, that's not true. I did. And when you know did you it. use protection? I'm sorry, Your Honor. But when did you use protection? I don't I, remember you yes, using I did, protection. Yes, I did, you knew I did. No, I didn't either. Your Honor, I used protection. Now, I, what I don't understand is how can two people have completely different accounts of every sexual encounter? You say you all 
always used protection, and she says you never did. Well, Your Honor, she acts as though I've, I've made, I've been with her all these many times. It's not, that's not the case. The stories were starting to sound very confusing in the courtroom. Mr. Jones had apparently been paying for child support all these years. His name was even written and signed on Ms. Jones's birth certificate. I mean, it couldn't have been forged. If he paid for child support through the years, and his name happens to be on her birth certificate, why then is he saying he is 100% positive? The child does not belong to him. It just doesn't make any sense. If this was the case, if I'm her father, if I'm to be her father, which I paid for her for all the many years. So you've been paying child support all these yes, years? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Are yes, you on I the have. birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor, he is on the birth certificate. I have a copy right here if you'd like to see that. And you Jerome, know please hand me that evidence. So let, take me back a little bit, Miss Brittingham. So you were still in a relationship with Mr. Jones? Yes. No, Your Honor, that's not correct. The genesis of this paternity crisis was that Mr. Jones felt Ms. Jones's mother was not honest with him when she gave birth to the child. He claimed that when she was asked who the father of the child was, she initially hesitated and then went on to call his name. Has Ms. Jones's mother been seeing other men? I mean, if he is the biological father of the child, why not boldly say his name and be done with it? But well, what happened is, then all of a sudden she hesitated and then she said Jerome Jones. What you felt like all these years was that she wasn't completely honest during that time. Exactly. And you've paid support all these years. Yes, I have. You have evidence that yes, you Yes, I do. It's right here, Your Honor. Jerome, please hand me the evidence. And, and it's two years on here that's, that's, it's two years missing that's not there because because my, that's the director for my company that I work for is payroll deductible. This is where things start to get out of hand. Mr. Jones presented his evidence showing how involved he had been in Ms. Jones's life. Apparently, Mr. Jones had paid over $50,000 in child support. Now that's a lot of money going into child support for a child you claim not to be yours, wouldn't you say? No one in their rich senses would want to pay that amount of money without knowing if the child was really theirs. I didn't go back that far because my company was sold. You're saying you've paid close to $50,000 in child support. Pretty close. For a child that you 100% believe is not yours. Absolutely. I'm sorry she has to go through this today because I still love her just like she is my child. No. And as so far as her, wait. and as far as her not, and as far as as far as her not coming to my house, that was her choice. That wasn't my choice. Mr. Jones's story started to have some serious twists and turns. Ms. Jones was tired of hearing him speak, so she decided to open up once again. Apparently, Mr. Jones didn't tell anyone she was his daughter. Whenever they went to gatherings, people would often ask who Ms. Jones was because Mr. Jones never mentioned he had a daughter. It was only there, and then Mr. Jones would reveal that she was his daughter. Like I said, something smells fishy with his story. I didn't, uh, who's this? And you said, this is my daughter. I was like, oh, I didn't know you had a daughter. You told that, me that? No, no you said that to them. No, that's no, not true. The, no, what was no. said was, they would say they didn't know he had a daughter. Yeah. And you would say that this was your daughter. And they said, oh, I didn't know you had a daughter. Why would I say that? Miss Brittingham, I need to ask you. Yeah. I mean, because he's paid the support. I got yeah. documentation yes. shows that he was paying his support. Well, it's finally time to unveil the truth after so many lies and deceptions. The day of a reckoning is finally here with everyone itching to know the truth. Are you ready to find out? I bet you are. So take a deep breath because here it comes. Mr. Jones, you are not Lakeisha's father. And that's fine. So now you know. I'm <laughs> So now you know. That's all right, because you'll always be my baby. Miss Jones, please sit down. That's all right. I know that's not the news you wanted. Are you okay? Yes, Your Honor. 